where does it lead? That's what this young couple is wondering. Their life together lies in front of them. Whatever it holds, they're sure that it lies in the United States. A short time ago, they were in a relocation center. Now they're in the Middle West, renewing their touch with the world they left a year earlier. They're facing life in a new community with confidence, together. Many of your friends have left the relocation center. Here are pictures of some of them. Nobura Aramura is checking for corn bugs in a field in Illinois. Nobura, a former California boy, comes from Jerome. And Kenneth Sujioka now turns out precision parts for bomber equipment on a fine tool lathe in a defense plant. A former Hollister, California orchardist, Ken took up machine work as a hobby. Now it earns him a good living. Miss Masako Takayoshi is assistant head nurse in the women's surgical ward in a large western hospital. She was at the University of Washington School of Nursing as a teaching supervisor before evacuation. In this same hospital, there are three other Nisei graduate nurses and several Nisei girls enrolled as student nurses. Masako has three brothers, all of them in the United States Army. This man operating a tractor on an Illinois farm is Roy Himoto from Tule Lake Center. Before evacuation, Roy farmed near Walnut Grove in California, and he worked on the farm project at Tule Lake. Here's a boy who looks like a good machinist, and according to the boss, he is just that, though he never did any of this kind of work before. He got his training on the job. He's turning out big machine castings in a plant that makes kitchen equipment. Non-essential work, they say. But the little figurines made in this Chicago studio bring pleasure to young and old. Mrs. Ayako Kasai from Granada enjoys her job of painting these miniature dolls. She used to live in Calusa, California. In the background is Cecilia Miyamoto from Topaz. She works here in the summer and attends Barat College during the school term. This is Kei Nakadoi from Jerome feeding chickens on an Illinois farm. And Kamago Shimatsu Issei is on the same farm. Shinobu Sakuma, Yochihara, and Yoshio Dogen also are on a Middle Western farm. Probably Ruth Nishi never thought she'd be a cracked turret lathe operator when she was working around her father's fruit stand in Berkeley, California. She lived at Poston for a while and was trained on her new job in Chicago while she worked at it. Tsukasa Sakama and Tarao Haino from Minidoka are spraying potatoes on a Midwestern farm. And here's a boy who always liked the printing trade, but never had an opportunity to work at it until after he lived for a while in a relocation center and came out to take a job as a helper pressman on this big rotary press which is turning out magazines by the hundred thousand. American eggs are shipped all over the world these days, but not in the shell. Mary Higuchi, who formerly lived in San Pedro, California, works in this plant where eggs are prepared for drying before they're shipped. She cracks the eggs and John Iamuri feeds the big drying machine. Jim Carisu was a clerk in Madeira, California before evacuation. He spent a few months at the Jerome Center and has since been learning the candy making trade in this big nationally known plant. Jim likes his job and plans to stay in this kind of business. It's pleasant work and he says a good candy maker can always find a job. Making flags in a western flag and decorating company is Mrs. Yoshie Abe, who relocated early from the assembly center at Santa Anita. These boys, most of them from around Watsonville, California, are back at their old trade, keeping the nation's produce rolling to the market. The seasonal produce here is a little different, but they feel right at home in their new job. This is Ralph E. Murray from Oakland, California, by way of Poston. He's operating a machine that seals and packs eggs for long distance shipment or for storage. This machine makes marshmallows by the millions, and it's being operated by Henry Ligoro, a former Fresno, California farmer who lived at Jerome for a while. Henry has one brother in the army. Backbone of the nation's food supply is its grain, and Tet Chiota is having his first threshing experience. He farmed before evacuation at Venice, California, and lived for a time at the Gila Center. Threshing is hard, hot work, but Tet's job on this farm includes other work that's easier, and his housing, food, and pay are good. Books by the thousands pass through this young fellow's hands as he operates a big bookbinding machine. 
He's learning a new trade, and the paycheck, when it comes around, looks pretty big compared to the limited amount of money the government's permitted to pay in the relocation centers. The people from the relocation centers are not getting rich outside, but they're getting a full day's pay for a full day's work. They're living fairly well, and some are getting money ahead. Consider the record of the Japanese people in America. It's something to be proud of, making the western deserts into some of the most productive land in the world. Establishing themselves in professions such as dentistry and medicine, as laboratory workers, as engineers, electricians, and many others. Those skills need to be kept polished by use, not allowed to rust like idle machinery. Every newspaper fairly screams with advertisements, help wanted. You can't walk down the streets of any city without seeing signs like these. There's a place for your ability, whatever it may be. And the opportunities are probably better now than they will be for years to come. Word of these opportunities comes to the employment office at the center. There's a wide selection calling for many different kinds of experience and ability. Some jobs where no experience is required. The employment officer will tell you more about the jobs that interest you. Your application for indefinite leave was made out some time ago. Probably it has been approved for weeks or months. And there should be little or no trouble in getting your final permit to leave the center from the leave office. If you don't have money enough to get to your new location, the government, through WRA, will make a grant of enough money to get you there, and a little extra until the paychecks start coming in. This money does not have to be repaid. It's a helping hand from Uncle Sam. It's a big moment when you start to pack for your trip outside. There are so many things to take, and you'll need most all of them. Yes, including Jimmy's roller skates. It's an even bigger moment when you walk through the gate for the last time, and present your pass to the guard for the last time, and take a look at the barbed wire fence for the last time. Your friends as they board the bus to leave the center are going to new experiences and to a better way of living. It may be that they'll go directly to their new job. In fact, most of the people who leave a relocation center know exactly what job they're going to take and for whom they'll work. These folks are arriving at a small town to take jobs on a nearby farm. The farmer's there to meet them, and he's just as anxious to have some help for his place as his new workers are to get started. Or perhaps they'll shop for a job in one of the cities where the War Relocation Authority has a relocation office Kansas City, Chicago, Cleveland, New York, or any one of about 40 other cities and towns. Where jobs are plentiful, and that's almost everywhere, the place to call first is the relocation office of WRA. You'll outline your experience and the kind of a job you're interested in. Probably there's a job to your liking on file. Representatives of WRA have called on businessmen of all kinds to learn their needs because someday there may be a person with the kind of ability this employer needs. He may come from Topaz or Minidoka or Poston or any one of the other relocation centers. Getting employers and prospective employees together is the most important part of a relocation officer's job. This man has lost most of his best workers to the Army or to other jobs, so he's glad to have some help in keeping his business going. He calls in the foreman to meet the new man, and they go out together to get started on the new job. Of course, it isn't all easy outside. There are difficulties, just as there always were, and some new ones as a result of the war. There's the problem of housing. In small towns or rural areas, it's generally not hard to find a place to live. But in most of the larger cities, housing is hard to get. Apartments advertised in morning papers are gone before noon. Some won't take children. But in several of the larger cities, Thoughtful people of several of the Christian churches have established hostels where people from the relocation centers may live for a short time at low cost while they find places to live permanently. Besides having a good time with other new arrivals, there is some helpful advice on where to look for houses or apartments. The experience of the other newcomers and of longtime residents helps to cut down the time required to find a house or an apartment. But even at best, you might as well expect to do a lot of walking and to read a lot of newspapers and follow up a lot of suggestions, as this couple has done. 
They've visited at least a half dozen apartment houses since we saw them last, and they try again. It looks like better luck this time. An apartment at a reasonable price. And now to get unpacked. Clothes go into a real closet. No more makeshift. And before long, the family feels at home. And then there's the matter of food rationing. Some foods are rationed. You'll need to learn about the ration coupon. But when you go shopping, if things are sort of a puzzle to you, there's always someone who's glad to help. This can of peaches is rationed, so it will take some of the ration point coupons out of the book. Most stores mark each can of ration food with the point value and the price. But there are some canned and processed foods which are not rationed. So, take a larger size if you want it. It won't cost you any points. And fresh fruits and vegetables take no ration points. So, buy as many as your family needs and your pocketbook will allow. The people who go outside the centers are finding that it isn't hard to make friends in a store, at church, or almost anywhere else. Casual acquaintances frequently become good friends, especially when there's something in common like two youngsters about the same age. Two youngsters, both of them growing up as Americans, regardless of where their grandparents were born. Most people like to be friendly and to show their friendliness. Women somehow find it easier to get acquainted in the kitchen than almost anywhere else, sampling cake, exchanging recipes, or just visiting. Speaking of kitchens, in a relocation center you get three meals a day, and you don't need to go hungry. The cooks do the best they can. Every once in a while you get a really good meal. But even the best of the mess hall cooks can't prepare a meal like Mother can fix in her own kitchen. And mess hall eating can't compare with the atmosphere of sitting down to a meal with your own family in your own dining room. It's probably the children who are influenced most by the way they live. They're going to grow up in the United States. It's their country. They may not object to the dust and wind of a relocation center, but there are other places that are more pleasant outside. And the adjustments to outside living are easy for them as thousands of youngsters already have demonstrated. The whole family will find things outside they'd almost forgotten. Parks where there are swans and pigeons to feed, where there are acres of green lawn and flowers, playgrounds, zoos, and other things you haven't seen for a while. You'll find beaches, even at some of the inland cities. This one happens to be in the city of Chicago. And motion pictures, the real Hollywood kind with comfortable seats and air conditioning. And there's a lot of shopping to catch up on. The war has cut down on the things you buy, but window shopping is still fun. And most important of all, the entire family can enjoy the satisfactions of home. Others have found these things for themselves. Homes, jobs, friends, places for themselves in new communities. Those things are yours if you want them. They make up the promise of the road ahead.